Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to go over bulkhead connectors, what they are, different series of them, tools required, how to use them, uh, which is probably best for you and, and which isn't. The first thing I want to say is that if the extent of your electrical tools is this, a hammer, a really nice titanium and carbon fiber knife, a pair of dikes, and a pair of these strippers, Turn this video off because none of these bulkhead connectors are right for you. Uh, now that we got that out of the way, understand that you have to put a couple bucks out into tooling in order for any of this to work out well. I'm going to go over a whole bunch of different series of connectors. I think this is just about every single circular connector available. I mean, there's, there's other off brands, but these are the most common. So first things first, um, they all have their price point, okay? So there's weather pack bulkhead connectors. They're not here because they're actually more trash than these. Um, but I won't even support, I, I don't even buy them. I don't even own them, so I can't show them to you. Um, the, the kind of the tier, the hierarchy of these things is these plastic um, uh, Deutsch connectors, Deutsch brand connectors. Then there's the, uh, the aluminum body one. And uh, they, these are pretty common. This is uh, what you find in a lot of cars. Uh, I have some gripes about these. I don't really use these anymore um, just because of uh, some, some of the issues, not for functionality so much as um, size and density and the lack of a back shell for a rubber boot to, uh, to sit on. So this is the, uh, the HD30 series of, uh, of connectors from, from Deutsch. And then you've got Next one up, which is everybody calls the mill spec connector, circular connector. Um, these are from, uh, I think I got these from uh, Joel at, uh, at Ray Spec. And um, these are good. These are, these are a really good connector. Um, you know, substantially nicer to work with, in my opinion, than these. And the reason being is, one, they're flanged already. So you can pop your hole. And then just this is sticking out and the flange is on the back side. And then you would take your uh, nut plate right there and you'd slide it over the back of this. And then you take some, some bolts and bolt it right in and now it's on your firewall. And then you've got a nice, um, you know, quarter turn to remove the other side. The, uh, the back shell actually threads on. And now you've got somewhere for, for a shrink boot to grab a hold of, right? So if you're looking to build a, a sealed harness, um, these are these are the way to go. These here, these work well with the uh, the the plastic boots that you can buy for them, or you can get a fancy and put these in a lathe, cut a pretty big size groove in the back here, where my finger is, and have somewhere for a boot to bite onto. In all reality, though, by the time you get into it financially, this cost here isn't that far off of this cost here. You really just have to make a decision as to how much money you really want to spend with these things. So the um, the benefit of these is that this is a 55 pin right here, all, all size 20 contacts. And this is a 47 pin, um, which is uh, 43, or I'm sorry, 42 size 20 contacts and five size 16 contacts. So the size is pretty dramatically different. Um, these get... That's a shell size 24. That gets pretty big uh, when you're trying to hide it in a um, in a firewall or you know tuck it off somewhere pretty nice uh, and compact. These stick out and protrude less from the firewall, whereas as you see, pretty dramatic difference here. Um, then you've got the other factor of it is is that if you want this to go into the firewall nicely, you need to use these um, these plates. Maven sells these. It's a great product, and I recommend these. I recommend these to the guys that are doing it yourself, um, because tooling-wise, is going to be a heck of a lot easier, uh, and um, availability is a lot easier. And Maven's a great vendor who has already figured all the different parts out that you need for these. So, uh, but in order to assemble this, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just threw, screw the nut on there, and uh, and you tighten it up into the plate and then the plate bolts onto the firewall. These have a plate built into them. These are a little bit more difficult to work with. I mean, I don't think so, but a lot of people complain because 
the um, the rubber seal that's on the back side is a lot more robust. It's a little bit harder to get the pin through. And then, um, but you know, there's there's a cost with this. You know what I mean? So if you're going to get into one of these connectors, say a 47 pin version, these are probably about 130 bucks uh, from Maven 130 for a single connector with the appropriate pins and whatnot. And then this is going to be around 200 bucks. So, you know, it goes up, you know, $70 to get into this with a, uh, with the, the correct back shell and the nut plate and, um, you know, and all the pins. So those are your two most common. And then, um, myself, I really like these, uh, these auto sport connectors. These are from Deutsch. Um, and if you notice, we've got a whole bunch of douchebags here. So, um, I, I use these a lot. I, I'm really have become a very big fan of these uh, as of recently. They're more expensive to be tooled for, but the end result, in my opinion, is a lot nicer. So these come in a very wide variety of uh, configurations, right? So this is a shell size 22. It already has a back shell built into it. So your shrink boot goes right on, to, on top of it. It's half the weight and half the size of the uh, the mill spec connector, the mill spec connector, and uh, and they're, they're but they are more money, right? So it's got a nut plate, same deal, but it's only a uh, you know two bolt, right? Because we've got a two bolt flange here, and then we've also got a gasket. the The tooling for Auto Sport is uh, is a lot more involved, so. There's a lot more options with Auto Sport. The uh, the options with with this stuff is um, with the mill spec connectors is, is typically just size 12 contacts, size 16 contacts, and size 20 contacts. Same thing with the HD30. If you don't know the difference between those, the size 12 contacts are rated for 25 amp per pin. The size 16 are rated for 13 amp per pin, and then the size 20 are rated for seven or seven amp per pin. Now, Auto Sport, no, I'm sorry, five amp per pin. Auto Sport, um, this is all size 20 contacts. So, but the contact is different. So these are the contacts. It requires a different positioner in your crimper for them to actually function. So while this is the crimper with a uh, an indent, it's going to be hard to focus on that red one there is size 20 that is not the correct size 20 contact that's that's for your standard deutsch and mil spec okay um and then also with the dmc afm8 um the the small version this does size 20 contacts as well for the mil spec connectors but it requires a different positioner which are these little guys for auto sport so Autosport has a ton of different contact sizes, but um, there's your positioner. Okay, so that means it goes in the right depth every single time, um, and, the, and the crimp is in the right spot every time. Where when you have an Autosport connector, you need a different positioner for each pin that you use. So they have size, you know, 16. I mean, they have all the way up to size 4, but they have size 16, 20, 22, 23. You can get a hundred pin connector that's this size so you'll never get that in this so um or you know or this you know you'll never get that type of density in that small of a package so you have to kind of decide what you want the majority of y'all watching are going to ask how do i put a bulkhead connector in the middle of my holly harness that's already been pre-made um if you're not pretty familiar with wiring and and what all is involved in this? I'm just going to tell you not to um, use a grommet. Uh, a grommet will make your life substantially easier. Use a nice grommet. Save yourself a couple bucks, and you won't have uh, issues that you are self-inflicted. A lot of guys that wind up trying to put a bulkhead connector in themselves wind up contacting me and asking me to finish off the job. Um, or, or other people like me, you know, other people that wire cars or their buddy that maybe has done it before. If you don't have any experience in wiring, if you think wire nuts are the way to go, if you think that you should be able to crimp your terminals with this hammer, 
and you should be able to strip the wire with this knife and, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, just stop. Don't do it. You're out of your element, Donnie. You know what I mean? Like you just, you you are. So uh, with that said, if you are ready to tackle something like this, um, entry level, I don't even know where these came from, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't even know where they came from, um, but they're, they're shit. So don't use them. Entry level, uh, intermediate, advanced. So price reflects it as well, right? So entry level is going to be like the hundred, hundred and thirty dollar. Uh, intermediate is going to be the two hundred dollar. Advanced is going to be the three hundred and fifty dollar area, right? Um, don't get into an auto sport connector and think you're going to shove TXL wire in it. If you're using an auto sport connector, you are building everything yourself out of Tevzel wire, which is all this stuff. So um, there's a, I keep a ton of this stuff. And there's more over here, but the reason being is, uh, the reason why is because the jacket on this stuff is substantially smaller and it is not going to fit into that. So you start trying to cram 20 gauge and uh, an 18 gauge wire through that, that's TXL or GXL, you're gonna have a bad day. Um, so if you're in auto sport, you're also in a Tevzel wire. If you're trying to use a Holly harness and you're pretty confident what you're gonna do, I'm gonna suggest you to use these. If you want a challenge and you want to uh, you know, cut your, your Holly harness in half and, and, and put a bulkhead connector, um, this is where I would suggest you to go. Uh, if you're up for the challenge, the, the, the wire that the, the jacket on the wire is just large for TXL. So it's, it's rather difficult to populate that connector. So you can see how small the hole is going through there. You see the little yellow thing in the background. Um, so again, intermediate, or I'm sorry, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, there's plenty of options with all of this stuff. There's so many different, um, pinouts if you will for all of these but the most common for an engine harness uh, at least in my dealings is a 55 pin uh, or one of these 47 pins um, and uh, if you stick to the basics you'll have a lot less of a headache than you will if you try to go off the deep end and uh, and get into uh, you know doing auto sport on your own for reference if you want to do auto sport on your own you're gonna need a Tevzel crimper or a stripper so you can use these, these are, you know, these are uh, an automated thing with a wire stop. If you're doing a lot of these pins, which if you're doing 55 of them, that's a lot because it's 110 to do both sides. I suggest buying a stripper that has a wire stop. Um, one, of the, uh, one, one, of, one of these two, either one will work. Uh, if you don't, if you're doing Tevzel and you don't want to buy one with a wire stop, these, uh, these ideal, what is this, 45, 416, these are um, what we supply with our wiring kits. Um, they're a little bit more tedious because they're manual, but you know, they're, the, the jaw, the, the teeth are actually cut for Tevzel wire. So if you try to use these on Tevzel wire, you're gonna wind up nicking the wire really bad or ripping strands off or not getting the actual jacket off. So getting into this level of stuff requires more tooling. Um, it requires positioners. It requires multiple positioners, depending on how many different si shell sizes or how many different contact sizes you're going to use. Uh, it requires using t Tevzel with a special stripper, and it's also going to require um, different uh, insert and removal tools. So the last thing I want to go over with this is these little insert and removal tools. You see them all over the place. They're color coded based off of the contact that they're designed for, and what they do is you lay the wire in that little groove. You can see it there in the green. And then the, uh, the terminal sits on the end of it and it helps you, there we go. It helps you put it in there. So you may think that this is stupid. You don't need this and throw it away. You'll be digging it out of the trash, I promise. Um, and then there's a removal tool for it as well. The next thing, sorry, don't mind my mess. This is another insert and removal tool. Um, these are available at like Auto uh, at Summit. I know that Summit has them, um, but these are three different uh, remove three different size um, removal tools. They're metal. Got to be careful with these because you can destroy your 
uh, locks that are built into the inside of these uh, inside of these connectors. So this the metal ones you got to be very careful with. The plastic ones will break before you break anything inside of the connector. So hopefully that answered some questions about uh, all the different types of uh, bulkhead connectors. If you are the hobbyist or do-it-yourself guy, um, you know, and you and you're you just want to cut open your standard um, holly harness and, and, and try to, you know, put a quick disconnect on it. I suggest you contact Maven buy their, their, uh, their, their bulkhead connector kits. Uh, very nice, you know, good, good panel or good, uh, machine work on this piece of aluminum to hold it in place. Uh, it's a nice finished product. And if you're looking, you know, a step further, um, these, uh, connectors, these mil spec connectors, they're readily available from a lot of vendors. These are the connectors that we actually supply in our wiring kits uh, because they are, you wouldn't want to pay $5,000 by the time you get all the different tooling that you need in order to do auto sport. So, you know, this is the sensible solution for, for our wiring kits. And obviously if somebody contacts us and said, Hey, I want to do auto sport. I'm happy to provide you with, you know, whatever it is for tooling or for whatever you need. And then, if you really just like wire and stuff and you want to take your, you know, your, your work to the next level, uh, look in auto sport. Um, uh, if you're the hobbyist with too much money and too much time, uh, look into the auto sport. So if you want a nicer finished product, auto sports where it's at, it's just get the wallet out and get ready to pay for it. So hopefully this, uh, this answers a lot of questions and have a good one.